Welcome back. For this week's fly we're going to do, um, we're going to change it up just a little bit and we're going to go with a caddis larva uh, that I came up with uh, was back when I was living in Pennsylvania. Uh, you can see it right here. It's just, uh, it was designed to imitate a granum caddis. Um, there are plenty of other tires that have similar patterns. Um, this is just the materials that I use. Uh, I know George Daniel has one very similar. Uh, I think he calls it catnip or something. I mean, it looks close, but you know, different materials that we use. Um, so this is just the version that I've come up with over the years. And like I said, it was originally done um, to imitate the granums, but I have found that it does work here out west as well. And it's just a good overall caddis pattern. Um, I tie this with and without uh, the bead. I tend to gravitate to going without the bead, but I'm just throwing this one in here. Uh, this one has it without, as you can see. Um, I'm just throwing this one in here just to show you how I tie them with the beads. Uh, this is just a regular, it's not tungsten. Um, just a regular black nickel bead, uh, 1 8. Um, I don't like to weight my nymphs and this lead is not here for weight or for taper or for anything. It is strictly here just to keep the bead in place. Um, I try to use as little as possible and have just a little bit and you can see, we'll zoom in a little so you can see where our lead is. Just enough to where it's sticking out past the bead. I shove as much as I can to the front and then I'll make my taper or I'll build my thread base from there. So I'll just go right over top of this lead. Now everything's in place and there's just a slight taper. Um, nothing, nothing too crazy. We're using a Daiichi 1160 size 12 for this. I run these in 10 through 14, 12 being the most common. And then just get a thread base down real quick. Let me readjust this slightly. And take this back. Same thing as before when we were tying on the 1160 uh, with the PMD Emerger. Take a parallel line with your hook point and draw it back and stop your thread just a shade above that. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in some 5x tippet. This is going to be our rib and it's going to keep our top material in place. And just bring this back, same thing, right where you stopped your thread. And just make your, just create your thread base. Just a slight taper, nothing, like I said before, nothing too aggressive. And then what I'll do next is I'll take some thin skin. Um, this is just regular olive. Uh, I have it in you know, plenty of different colors. There's the mottled oak olive. I like running that one a lot, but we're just going to use the transparent olive today. Um, it's all up to you on what color this you decide to use. I tied this for a while with um, just a regular rubber glove, and I would color it up, and it worked well. It just seemed like it lost color after a while. So I stumbled upon this stuff and it's been what I've been using for the long time now. And we'll just take and tie this in. It helps. You can see this has a little cardboard backing on it. So you just cut this out whatever, whatever width you want it to and then cut a V into it and then you can tie that in 
Um, it makes it a lot easier. It's a lot cleaner tying it that way. The material seems to respond a lot better. So we'll just run this through here, get our thread base. We have our 5X and our back tied in at the moment. The next thing we're going to take is this uh, Midge Cactus Chenille in fluorescent chartreuse. And we're just going to tie this in. And we'll build our taper just slightly with our with our thread. Now we'll throw a half hitch in here and we'll run this just shy of the bead. So take your time with this stuff, there's no rush, just nice even wraps one right in front of the other. Um, it's pretty fragile so don't put a ton of tension on it but we'll run this right about to there and then I'll just take probably go uh, I don't know just past halfway and work it back and this just builds a slight taper um, you can see, I mean, it's not real aggressive. These things, these, the naturals don't have a huge taper to them. So I don't really work, I don't really worry too much about building a ton of bulk. They're pretty slender flies uh, to begin with. And once we throw our top over this, it's going to slender down even more. Um, next up, we're going to take the, this, Cactus chenille in black, and we're just going to tie this in and fill up our space that we have right behind the bead. So just same thing, nice, nice even wraps. Try and keep your taper consistent. Go over it a few times, and that looks pretty good right there. We're going to call that good. cut my thread. Get that trimmed up. Now you're going to pull your thin skin back over top and I should have threw a half hitch in there. We'll get it corrected. Couple loose wraps and then you can really tighten down. Now here's where you're going to want to throw in a half hitch. Um, when you're wrapping your 5X back through, every once in a while it'll want to, your thread will want to skip on you and it'll unravel and you wind up having your, your back come off and then the cuss words ensue. Just trim this up. It gets a little tricky to trim this with the bead and your thread wraps right there. Just get it as close to you, as you can. As you can see, I mean, it, it's not a big deal at all. It's not really visible. And especially once we throw our knot over top of it, once we whip finish, it'll all but disappear. So then I want to take my 5X in the opposite direction that I wrapped my other material. So we're just going to bring this right here and we're going to counter wrap it. And you can get pretty aggressive with this. You can pull down pretty tight. Um, you're not really going to cut through your thin skin. And you'll see it makes a nice seg segmented body up to the front. Just nice even spaces, even spacing. 
and then finish this right in front of your bead. My thread got a little bit long on me there, but we're all right, we're out of the woods. And then just finish this off. Cut your tippet. And then right behind the bead, a quick whip finish. Trim your thread, dab of glue, you're set. Like I said, very simple, very quick pattern to tie. Also very effective. Um, March, April, back in Pennsylvania. Uh, anytime you have caddis popping, um, no matter where you're fishing, this is going to be an effective pattern. It's very, very good, easy to imitate the naturals. And there we have it. This is your granum flavored caddis larva. Um, if you have any questions on this video, have any questions on the pattern, um, shoot them to me in the comments. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. And we'll catch you next week on the next fly. Thanks. Mm -hmm.